So I'm at Prestonfield House Hotel for this uh, next location for drawing the garden and the gardener. And we've even got a gardener cutting the lawn. Um, there was a bit of a choice between um, Jock Tamsin's garden in Duddingston, which would have been more of a sort of vegetable um, allotment type garden, but I feared for the weather, so um, we're going to go on Monday, or well, we're going to come here on Monday to Prestonfield House, and it's a slightly more formal garden, but uh, there's plenty of beautiful things to draw. And the way that I'm going to work today in this video, and that I'm going to encourage you to work with next week, either on Monday when you come here, or if you're working at home, is with some oil bar. So clear oil bar, I've covered the page with that, and I'm going to draw into it with a charcoal pencil. <clears throat> and um, this first drawing is going to be black and white, and uh, I'm going to then work on some uh, colour pieces as well. So I cover the page with the oil bar and I'm starting with this spectacular line of, um, I don't know what they're called when they put trees inside these cages. It's a little bit reminiscent of the, the draftsman's contract. Uh, but these structures I, uh, my way into this drawing <clears throat> I'm doing what I'll encourage you to do which is just really making a few sketches um, to find my feet get used to what's on offer and working with this oil bar surface and the charcoal pencil I'm doing this tentatively because I don't quite know where it's going yet I'm hardly having to press, put any pressure on the pencil to make these marks, but I know that because of the oil bar surface, I'll be able to smudge them. So, you know, I'll, this is not what I would do first, but I could fill in these shapes a little bit and then smudge them and even scrape off a bit because that's how the oil bar behaves. But I'm starting tentatively because I just want to see what's going to come into view. I've got some spectacular trees. I've got that formal um, line of caged trees, which uh, create a nice bit of perspective. <clears throat> and then uh, other things along the way, a second row of them. And then here in my foreground, I presume it's rhubarb, actually. So this is one of the ways that I'll be encouraging you to work, to draw some lines, to hatch in tone, and then making the most of this very fluid surface of the oil bar uh, to smudge and build up areas of tone. And I think the best thing to do with oil bar is to keep topping it up so you can take care not to lose your drawing <clears throat> by applying the oil bar almost drawing with the oil bar so that you don't move things more than you want to or you can just smudge your drawing take something that's a little bit definite and then um, take the definition away uh, so that you can then return to the drawing and very selectively choose what to define. <clears throat> but you might see now, now that I've built up a bit more oil bar, I can actually make a darker mark. Some of that tone and some of these lines are now actually getting much stronger. And it's not because I'm putting more pressure on, it's because the oil bar acts as a medium and it's mixing with the charcoal pencil and we're just getting more material on the page and building up that tonal uh, contrast. 
So that's one way of working and it can get stronger and stronger. So I'll, I'll pause and I'll do a bit more drawing. So what's nice about the oil bar is that it is, the drawing gradually gets stronger as you build up the material. And as with any drawing, ideally what you might do towards the end is sort of top up some of the darker marks, add some accents in order to make things stand out. And of course with the oil bar being so fluid, you can also um, scratch away, you know, subtract a bit and get in some lighter, provided you've put um, some oil bar on all of the paper, it will kind of um, uh, stop it staining the page. And then as a final kind of step, I wish the sun was shining actually, because then I would put some nice shadows on these structures. I think that would be a, a welcome addition. But yes, the last things to do to the drawing then, bringing out some of the darker shapes uh, and scraping off where necessary. I mean, this, what I'm drawing here is it's almost a park. Uh, there's a certain amount of growing with the rhubarbs down here, but um, it's very much a parkland. I'll try a colour thing next. So I've come for a different view away from the lawn mowers as well. And I'm going to try putting down colour first. Uh, colour pastels, then some oil bar, and then drawing into it with a charcoal pencil. I could have, I've actually done this just to sort of get my eye in, uh, I could have started with a little bit of charcoal uh, to find my subject, because I want to get these steps and these urns and then a view to the house and the gardens in front of the house. But I think it might be more interesting to just start with some of the colour shapes. So doing, working in that way obviously means I'm not going to be that precise and I'm going to get stray colours. But I'm doing that because I think that could be quite interesting. It'll be putting down a kind of pattern of main colours, things might end up in the wrong place uh, and then hopefully that means that there will be interesting colour effects. I'm starting with the side of the pastel which I think is probably helpful in restricting myself to shapes and Having put down the colour shapes, I then, I'll either mix them a bit, I want to go for these different amazing bright bushes. So I either mix them a bit, so for example that green I think needs a bit more yellow. I can do a little bit of mixing on the surface and then smudging. Or, um, just applying the pastel and smudging and I need a dark green which is a rare a rare beast I'm not going to find it so I'm going to do a bit of charcoal and a bit of green because I want to get something up here for these and of course that you know that's a perfectly good way to work, to not just use the pastel colours, but as I've been describing, mix them, mix them a bit with charcoal, smudge them. So that's to get in most of my colour shapes. I'll lose most of the white, and then I'll have a little bit for the building. I might just leave the white paper for the building. And then, of course, we get the mountain up there. So, colour down, a bit of smudging, working really on a white surface. So I want to lose some of the white, I think. And then I'm going to apply my oil bar.
and as I've already demonstrated and said there'll be a certain amount of smudging and mixing so the oil bar will do some of the mixing for you and you can just decide how much how much you want things to move around and that that's not necessarily clean well it is clean enough it's okay now the thing is um, once the oil bar is down I won't be able to put on any chalk pastels I'll be able to put on draw with the charcoal pencil and I could possibly add oil pastels which I didn't bring with me here so I won't be putting any oil pastel on this one for this demonstration but uh, I'll bring oil pastels on Monday well I must say I do like the effect because it's really turned it into a painting uh, and I'm now going to draw into that painting and as is always the case because I'm coming back to this with uh, you know a kind of defining line then um, I'm more than likely going to be much more selective about that line so I won't define things perhaps as much as I might have done if I'd started with a line but this time, of course, we've got colour, and I can doubtless manipulate that colour a little bit. I'll just do some lines first, and then I might scrape off a little bit, scratch a bit. And as I've described, if I had some oil pastels, they could also be part of the, the mix. So... I'm introducing these lines sometimes to effectively the wrong color and again that's something I need to just decide will I introduce the right color perhaps using oil pastel or does it actually not matter does it actually add something uh, a depth and interest and this business of uh, adding the line to, to create some definition, then I really want to be standing back and looking at exactly what I do, I define. You know, the things that I define more than likely will stand out and therefore have some importance. And if I'm beginning to think about a composition of a garden or a gardener, what are the things that I want to stand out? What am I going to make important? And as I've said, I can actually do a little bit of, or maybe I can't, a bit of scratching and scraping. Before you scrape, you can always try a little bit of oil bar. That sometimes moves things a bit. But now it looks like those colors as well are truly, no, they're not completely, but they, they are a little bit, uh, Well, they've stained the paper. No, it can be done, actually. It can be done. Depending on how much staining they did. So there is scope to introduce that lighter element. Or just to move things around, smudge them a bit more. So I think that's the thing to, to do with this medium. You know, keep going. Uh, adding, subtracting possibly picking things up from one part of the picture and moving around. It's very like painting, uh, in the best sense, I think. A bit like almost painting, oil painting, but a bit of watercolour as well, because there's a lot of use of the um, white paper showing through these colours. Anyway, I think that's a reasonable demonstration of what's possible, first in black and white, and then putting the colour down. So we'll be here, uh, those of you who can make it on Monday at Preston Beard House Hotel, and we'll uh, range around the garden. It's a fairly formal setting. Some of it's almost like parkland. They've even got highland cows and a uh, 
one of those birds that puts up its tail. A peacock, there we go. So I'll take some photographs and include them on the email um, for those who aren't able to come. But you might just use this approach with your own reference material. Okay, well, see you soon. Bye-bye.